G'day everyone, today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get your free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or click the link in the video description below. Over 180,000 titles to choose from and available for pretty much any device. Good ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome aboard the F6F5N Hellcat. The F6F5N is the most advanced form of the Hellcat actually entered into the tech trees of War Thunder, and it's interesting in a couple of ways. This was intended to be a night fighter version of the Hellcat. Over 1,500 of these aircraft were actually built during the course of the war, and they were deployed into three separate squadrons with the intention of having them hunt down and destroy Japanese bombers at night time. In War Thunder it appears in the tech trees at rank 3, battle rating 4.3, and is armed with two 20mm AM2 cannons with 462 rounds of ammunition, and four 12.7mm Browning M2 machine guns with 1,600 rounds of ammunition. Its overall flight performance is not unlike that of the standard F6F5 that has been in the tech tree at 3.7 for some time, and it carries the same ordnance options available, including tiny tims and the ability to carry a torpedo into combat should you wish to. So the battle rating increase on the aircraft is entirely based around those cannons. Now, thankfully, it doesn't actually impede the endurance. Aircraft that trade out machine guns for cannons often suffer a reduction in combat endurance due to the smaller amounts of ammunition. However, with 462 rounds of ammunition between those two cannons, overall the aircraft's in-combat endurance is largely unaffected. Now while the cannons can be easily overlooked when engaging an N5, its most prominent feature that gives away what it is, is the large bulb on the right wing. This is the AN-APS-6 radar that is used for the aircraft in its night fighting capacity, allowing it to find aircraft and eliminate them in the darkness. Of course, as with all radar systems in War Thunder and the aircraft that carry them, this system is not modelled. The bulb is there for the appearance of the aircraft, but it is non-functional. So, in today's battle we are taking on the Germans, and as you would expect, most of them have managed to beat us to altitude. At this point we've pulled ourselves up past 12,000 feet. This aircraft is not fully upgraded at this time, it still has the Tier 4 engine upgrades and a couple of the wing and aerodynamic upgrades to go, so its climb speed is not as good as it could potentially be. Towards the enemy runway we have a G55 and a BF109, these are engaging one of our aircraft that tried to rush ahead, and we have a TA154 in close that's realised he's in trouble, and I always hate seeing this, we've got a Spitfire, a Mustang, and a P38 that are all diving after him, all the way down to the deck, and it looks like we've got a P63 that's going in as well, so there's three, potentially four aircraft all the way to the treetops. No, thankfully the P-63 has realised that this is a really bad idea and has pulled in at about my altitude and not continued to dive. And three aircraft all the way down to the treetops just for the exchange or the chance to kill one aircraft. And so what happens, the Axis forces tilt themselves over and they dive in on the three aircraft that have dove on their TA-154. That TA-154 is a professional fisherman, he just baited three planes into a very bad spot. We've got the MC-202 ahead at the moment. I'm unsure if that's a cannon version or not. It's just reading as a 202. I'm assuming at this battle rating it would have to be one with the cannon pods. We've also got the G-55 down there as well. Now that would be an aircraft that I would really like to get rid of. They are extremely dangerous and extremely powerful in the right hands. The 202 has decided that there is just too much action over here and has bailed out. Now the 154 looked like he was going to run, but he's now turned back around and is assisting a BF-109 in engaging our P-38. So I'm putting the aircraft into a dive. At this point, I'm going to have to give up the altitude. We've got multiple hostile aircraft down below, and they need to be eliminated. Otherwise, they are going to kill all of our teammates. And it looks like the P-38 just got smoked. I can't see a fire, but he may be out of this fight. I can't get a good enough look at him. TA-154 cuts around. We rip the guns across it. Use the dive speed we've gained at nearly 800 kilometers an hour to reclimb and reposition ourselves for the next pass. Now it looks like the P-38's keeping itself going, but it's definitely dropping material at the moment. Oh, no, there we go. TA-154 takes out the P-38 and is heading in our direction, which is actually kind of convenient because I want to get down there and kill him. Those things are incredibly powerful. I absolutely love flying mine. It is lethal. You do not want to leave them alone. 
and Spitfire looks like he's coming in for it as well. Spitfire 5. He gets swung at by the BF-109. Take a shot of the BF-109. For switching shots back to the TA-154, and the Spitfire rolls through my gun, sets itself on fire. I put an extra couple of bursts into the back of the TA-154 that just simply rolls over and executes the now-burning Spitfire, taking the kill for himself. I kind of feel bad about that, but what was that Spitfire doing pulling that kind of maneuver straight through my tracer fire in the first place? Regardless, continue pursuit of the TA-154, another big hit, this time we take out one of the control surfaces, continue putting shots into the back of the plane, not shooting as cleanly as I could be here, but there we go, light the engine on fire, pull the aircraft straight into the vertical, and the TA-154 is out, so first kill. Immelman onto the 6 of the BF-109 F4 that just tried to boom and zoom us, and it is bugging out of the area hard. We also have that MC-202 floating around the area, it's only 4 kilometers out as well, and we have lost all of our allies in this area. Now the enemy team does still have some aircraft at altitude at this point in time, but we have a Spitfire and an F4U that is currently dealing with those. Since my Hellcat is not fully upgraded, trying to deal with these aircraft at altitude is... Well, it's not ideal. This thing just doesn't have enough performance without being fully upgraded to be able to deal with them. The F4 cuts back around. I'm not entirely sure what he was trying to do there. It originally looked like he was going to try and turn in on me, but seemed to choose against it and decide to run in the opposite direction. Drop down to the deck in pursuit. 600 meters out the target, first burst out, and we have hits on the back of the aircraft. Line up the second shot. A couple of bad bursts there, third one goes through and rips the aircraft in half, and that is the second kill of the match. Once again, bring the Hellcat back around. We still have the MC-202 over here. It is currently being engaged by that P-63 from earlier on in the match. It is five kilometers out and closing. Just checking our 6 o'clock high on the G55 and the C205, look like they're still engaging the F4U and the Spitfire at this point. And the F4U just took out the C205, which leaves that as a 2 on 1 fight against the G55 with the Spitfire and the F4U having the advantage. MC202 is heading in this direction, now it's looking like it wants to go head on and I was more than willing to oblige it from this position. Aircraft in a gentle dive, line up the shot. One burst in and then bank away, we take a couple of clips but nothing serious, and we absolutely crush the MC-202 down the nose. Destroy the engine, and there is my third kill. And the Spitfire takes out the G-55, so that is all the enemy team's fighters eliminated. Of course, they still have two aircraft remaining. Now this is battle rating 3.7 to 4.7 bracket versus Germany, so have a guess what those last two planes are. Almost 23,000 feet and 10 minutes later we encounter our first one. It is a BV-238. It is one of two that are remaining in the match. Unfortunately at this point, well, I'm the last man standing for my team. The Spitfire and P-63 were both destroyed trying to engage the second BV which is at a much lower altitude and the F-4U crashed due to damage sustained in its dogfight with the 205 and the G55. So this leaves me alone to deal with two BV-238s in order to take a win in this match. So, at this altitude, with its current level of upgrades, the Hellcat doesn't perform as good as it could. So I am taking extra altitude beyond the altitude of the BV-238 here. I'm doing this for two reasons. I want a bit of a dive when I'm coming in on the 238 to engage it quickly, and I want to gain speed so I can exit out of its arcs of fire as quickly as possible. And we're very slowly creeping up on it. It's actually one of the things to remember with the 238s. They are surprisingly fast for a bomber at altitude. That many engines and that much lift, they nip along to the point where Getting ahead of them in a fighter in a reasonable amount of time is actually quite difficult to do. If they're not coming straight at you, you are probably going to have to engage them for the rear, so you need to be smart about how you do it. Now there's two things I'm looking for here. First is I'm looking to either get directly above the aircraft for a harsh dive down. The second thing I'm looking for, and I'll take the opportunity if it presents itself, is for the pilot of the BV-238 to actually take control of the aircraft itself. Right now he will be sitting on the gunner's position with his reticle sitting right over the top of my aircraft. If I dive in, he will just hose my aircraft apart. So there we go, the aircraft is beginning to turn, so he's taken manual control of the aircraft. Start diving in and I'm aiming completely at that right wing. Control surfaces and flaps go off, continue putting shots in. 
and I'm looking for a fire. There's the fire. Immediately bank out. Now I've taken a spray across the front of the aircraft. My engine is crapped out. Everything in the front of the plane is now red. Continue pulling away so I don't take any more of those hits. And at this altitude, with an engine fire, a wing destroyed, lift loss on one side, and in a dive like that, he is dead. There is absolutely no reason for me to turn this plane around and go back after him. However, he was almost directly above his home airfield. Thankfully, with this much altitude under my belt, even if my engine fails, I should be perfectly fine to make it all the way into the base. But... I still have to make my way straight to the base. I cannot go looking for the second BV at this point in time, and it is currently attacking ground targets. And it's a good thing that I did have that altitude as well, because just a couple of minutes later my engine did fail, and I had to bring this plane all the way back to base completely under glide. Now the engine is feathered, so the prop is just rotating in the breeze, minimizing drag, and we've managed to make it most of the way in. We've actually got probably more speed than we're going to need for this approach. Especially once we start nosing down to bring ourselves to the end of the runway. It almost sounds like the engine is trying to restart itself here, which is interesting given the level of damage. Not that it would make a difference if it did actually start at this point. Due to the fuel leak we received off the BV, we're down to five seconds worth of fuel anyway when the engine failed. Just some long, slow curves just to get my speed under control. I don't want to come in too hard. The plane is already damaged enough, so if I mess this landing up and actually hit the ground too hard and anything breaks, chances are the plane won't be repaired. Just a little bit of cannon braking there just to arrest the speed a little more. Flaps down, gear down. And last but not least, touchdown. Hard on the brakes and full pitch up once the aircraft is stabilised in order to put the tail on the ground and keep it nice and hard to the ground. Just pulse the brakes so we don't nose stand because again we cannot take any more additional damage on this aircraft. Spin it to a stop and aircraft back up in 21 seconds. And so back to the sky again. 1BV238 remaining, it's a 1v1. Whoever wins this is going to get the last man standing award and we are fully repaired, fully armed and fully fueled. We just have absolutely no idea where the BV is going to be, but being that it is a BV and relatively slow climbing, I didn't expect it to be too high, and then I got that. A player on your team is being hunted. I am the only player left on my team. I hate this mechanic. This mechanic always kicks in at the worst possible times. The idea behind this mechanic is supposed to be for anybody who has not been involved in a battle for a certain period of time that have stayed out of combat, the game will spawn in a number of AI aircraft to attack them and force them back into combat. In theory it works very well, until you have to glide an aircraft the entire length of the map with its engine shot out and land it, and the game still records that as no combat time, so you get attacked as soon as you take off the runway. Well it was either that or punishment for the Spitfire earlier on, I don't know which. Regardless, there are two AI BF109F4s now engaging me, so bring it around on the first one and start trying to close the gap. And this is actually where the problem formed, because for aircraft that are meant to be hunting me and punishing me, they spent most of their time running from me. It took almost two minutes to finally get into a position to actually engage this F4. We got hits on the left wing, a little sloppy on the aiming for the second shot, line up the lead, couple of sparks there, and finally we collapse the aircraft. So now it's time to go find that other AI. And this really annoyed the hell out of me. Not only did this mechanic activate at a time that I really couldn't afford it activating and where there was no reason for it to activate, but this F4 just ran. It made absolutely no attempt for an aircraft that is supposed to be hunting me down to engage me in any way, shape or form. It does nothing but run away from the airfield and then run back towards the enemy airfield in a straight line with another BV-238 still left to find in order to actually end this match, and we're approaching 40 minutes of flight time at this point, I can't help but feel that this mechanic and this aircraft was spawned in simply to waste my time, fuel and ammunition. So almost six minutes later and a blind hunt order activation, which I needed to. This battle was just dragging on for way too long. We finally managed to locate the final BV-238. It's at low altitude. It doesn't look like it's actually tried to land, which makes sense. 
The BV-238 has no wheels, so in order to put down on a runway on this map, it has to crash, which the game could consider to be the loss of an aircraft, and hand me automatically the win. So the pilot has kept it in the air, and instead of bombing out the targets, it's flying around trying to use its gunners to strafe out all of the ground targets in order to get the points lead it needs to end the match. I can't let it continue doing that, so trying to position directly above it, once again, we're going to go for just the right wing. Sharp dive, nose down. Shots in, we get the fuselage a little bit, adjust our aim, rip into that right wing, go underneath and come out the other side. We take a couple of clips on the way through that hit our control surfaces and the tip of our right wing, but we've blown out the oil and cooling systems on the right-hand side of the aircraft. Now, I wasn't entirely sure that was going to be enough to take it down, but do not turn back on a BV-238. That is just a silly mistake to make. Pull back for altitude, spiral above it, and reposition, ready for a second attack if necessary. Now, the pilot at the moment is spending most of his time on the manual gunners trying to spit shots in my direction, which means the aircraft is listing heavily, and he has no control over it. He's relying on the instructor to keep the aircraft in the air at all times. At this point, it looks like he has taken control of the aircraft again, and he's going to have to, because if he doesn't, it's going to crash. Since at this point I'm pretty confident the player is back at the controls and nose back down and once again we're going to go in for that right wing, but then I was watching the aircraft closely, it's losing altitude and into the trees it goes. Kill number 5 for the match, 6 if you include the AI, and the final enemy aircraft eliminated. And with that we can move on to the results. So results for the match, we get first place for the team with 5 player kills, 4448 points in total for the match. We picked up the Fighter Rescuer Award, Avenger, Soft Landing, Ground Forces Rescuer, Professional X5, Shadow Strike Streak X5, Final Blow, Survivor, Last Man Standing, and Terror of the Sky. 82,940 Silver Lions for the match with a premium account, no bonuses enabled. 5,376 modification research points, which unlocks the engine injection, and 7,633 vehicle research points to go into the PB4Y-2, the last aircraft in the American tree that I have to unlock. And the vehicle modifications research was also enough to not only complete the engine injection, but for us also to unlock the wing repair and get started on the airframe. So overall, not the cleanest ace match I've ever had, but it was definitely one that was interesting and had a couple of moments in there that had me scratching my head. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Please remember to check out Audible, my sponsor for the channel, to get your free audiobook and free 30-day free trial. I've just started a new book called 44 Days. 44 Days is the story of Australia's 75th Squadron and 44 days that they defended Port Moresby alone against the Japanese. Anyways, my link is www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv, or as always, the link is in the video description down below. If you'd like to help support the channel more directly, the link to my Patreon is also in the video description down below, and until next time, click that like button if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.